Hello, hello, and welcome to Temple of the False Pod, where our decks are not optimized, but our plays sure as heck are fun. Could I say it any faster? Let's try- no. Uh, welcome to Season 4 Finale. It's Halloween time! So, last week we talked about all the exciting things of Innistrad, of yore. Does that mean past? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Um, this week, uh, since it is our finale, uh, we thought we'd do our normal thing and build some decks based on a theme. But we're not necessarily just an EDH podcast, and we want it to be known. So we dug into our time machine, found a 60-card uh, casual deck that we thought we would like to try. Uh, does that make sense? Who knows? Lord of Tresserhorn is our main villain of today. Is he a villain? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, you just have to take a look at the picture. I mean, he's Grixis. I mean, so he, like, <clears throat> he is pointing at you know a a stump of wood that's covered in blood. He does hold an axe, and it's pretty obvious what happens along that stump. I'm assuming that there's more than one severed head that floats around. Are you saying executioners are always the bad guy? No, I'm saying when a guy's a lord ah. and he's an executioner, it's generally expected that he's a bad guy. Okay. Well, of course, having said that, you know, Ned Stark, also a lord, also did his own executions. So, uh, anyway, we've got uh, Lord of Tresserhorn Zombie. Uh, before we jump into the decks, I'm going to read off the card. It's uh, from... That, alliances from alliances wow okay yeah uh it's one blue black red for a 10-4 good buddy is, yeah 10-4 good buddy it's a uh, very impressive legendary creature zombie is there i don't i don't even know if there's anything errated to that there isn't um it's funny the amount of times that i over the years i've looked at this card and gone yeah he's he's a he's a merfolk I don't know why. I think it's the blue background. <laughs> anyway. Uh, he says, When Lord of Tresserhorn comes into play, you, lo lo bleh, you lose two life, you sacrifice two creatures, and target opponent draws two cards. Uh, for black, you can regenerate him, which uh, is old speak for uh, you tap him, and the next time he would die this turn, he doesn't. Right? Yes. Now... <clears throat> couple of things i'm not going to dwell on this very long uh lord of tresser horns on the reserve list uh in spite of that you'll note that his price is only is well like six bucks it's like yeah. six bucks uh that tells you all you need to know about the power of lord of tresser horn um a 10-4 creature for four mana sounds great but when it comes right down to it the drawbacks are just so harsh and, yeah. if, and he doesn't have trample. He doesn't have any ways to get through. So most of the time, assuming you can get him out, and it's really hard to do that early because you need to be able to sack two creatures. So you need two creatures out before he gets out. Um, he costs four four mana. Three of that are different colors. So your mana base has to be extremely flexible to him for him to hit early. Mm -hmm. um, and you also can't wait till too late in the game. Because you do lose two life when he enters the battlefield. So if your life total's already getting low, that extra two life on top of it doesn't, isn't helping you. Yeah. And an opponent draws two cards. You, Which, never, you rarely yeah. ever want to see that happen. Um, but in this case, uh, part of the reason why Lord of Tresserhorn saw early popularity in multiplayer was that you, can, you get to decide which opponent draws the cards. So, at least in some situations, you can choose the opponent who really can't hurt you. You can choose an opponent who you're working with against someone else. Mm. Uh, you know, you basically try and make that work in your favor. Right. Yeah. So, we, we went our separate ways. We took our little lad uh, to, to our homes and made a deck with him. Uh, yes. 60 card, casual when I originally built this deck, and yeah, I have built this deck. Uh, <laughs> this is a rehash for me because my build just isn't working the way I wanted it to. I'll get into that more when I start talking about the new version. But um, 
I originally built it with the cards I had. So just because we're running 60 card casual doesn't mean that uh, I'm going to choose to add in Black Lotus and the appropriate moxes and all the rest of this stuff. We're not here to build a busted deck. We're here to build a fun deck that's gonna that, that everyone's gonna enjoy. So yeah. Um, On that note, Andy, mm -hmm. let's talk about your deck because okay. honestly, I got a real kick out of your deck. And cool. Uh, I want to talk about it. So we want to save best for first. Yes. Yeah. Um, my deck. Uh, it was pretty simple. Uh, I <laughs> started obviously with uh, four copies of of the Lord himself. Right. Um, and uh, went directly to trying to figure out what am I going to sack to him. And uh, a couple years ago in, uh, I think it was War of the Spark or one of those sets, uh, there was a mechanic called a mass, uh, which it was a mass number. Uh, and it said, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on an army you control. If you don't control one, create a zero, zero black zombie army creature token first. So... Uh, it is mostly, or it is more, I guess, based around that than actual Lord of Tressorhorn, but you get small creatures, you get a creature token out of doing this, and you go from there. Um, I think this is the biggest issue I have with the deck, is that I really lean into a mass, and you're never going to get more than, more than one, one zombie, yeah. zombie out of this. But uh, for other, uh, I mean, I've got... 20 creatures in the deck, including Lord of Dresserhorn, and that is not counting all of the tokens that they will make. Um, right, and you, the, even the creatures that you have, uh, you've got a ton of recursion. Yes. So, so uh, speaking of recursion, I've got uh, Jiza and Garolf uh, from Eldritch Moon. Uh, there are 4-4 four, four for 2 blue-black. There we go. There we go. Uh, legendary creature, Human Wizard. Uh, when they enter the battlefield, mill four cards. Uh, and during each of your turns, you may cast a zombie creature spell from your graveyard. So this includes Tressorhorn himself. It includes... Uh, I've got uh, Gleaming Overseer, uh, which uh, amasses when it enters the battlefield, but also gives uh, zombie tokens you control. Hexproof and Menace. Um and uh that's it for zombies uh but uh it's i mean it's mostly there to get dresser horn back out i've got two copies of them because i kind of round the dresser horn idea to six um so uh it, it's there to get dresser horn out of the graveyard if he makes it in there right um let's see uh I've got four reassembling skeletons because it's, well, I mean, four so that you can get it well with I mean, any sort of consistency. But also it's for two mana, you get a 1-1, one, one, sure. But every time it goes to the bat or graveyard, you can pay two to just put it right back on the battlefield. Granted, it's tapped, but if you need something to sack or you need to block so that you can pad your life out to get Right, Real, realistically, out. that I mean, if you need to sacrifice two creatures, you can sacrifice two reassembling skeletons. Yeah, and then you can bring them right back out on the battlefield if you need to sack. Yeah, two others to get the Lord back onto the battlefield or to play a second one. Don't do that; they're legends. But um, <laughs> if, if you can sack be, one Tressorhorn for another, well, I don't know why you would, but you can. Ooh, yeah, no, I. Um, you do not want to get into a recursion battle, recurring your Lord of Tressorhorn with somebody as they kill it over and over again. <laughs> that battle is not going to last long. You are not going to win that battle. Don't do it. But, yeah. Uh, but you do want to have the ability to recur him. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, odds are, odds are, your Lord is not, one one copy of Lord of Tressorhorn is not going to be enough to do, to do enough damage to kill off yeah. multiple opponents. So, so, yeah, and the great thing, too, um, and this might not seem like it uh, at first, is the fact that the sacrifice and the payment that you are paying, essentially, to get Trezorhorn out and working is an ETB. So it's enter the battlefield, then do this thing. So if he gets countered, he 
you just goes to the graveyard. You don't have to do these things. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things nowadays where it's like, in addition, <clears throat> or as an additional cost, sacrifice this thing, which is a big pain because then if it gets countered, you're out, you know, in this case, it would be two creatures, yeah. two life, and negative two cards. Uh, but uh, it's great that this is an ETB because, uh, I mean, you can do things with it on the stack, etc. Right. Um, yeah. Um, as for other things that amass you things, uh, Dreadhorde Invasion mm -hmm. uh, was one of my favorite cards from War of the Spark. Uh, it's a black and one for an enchantment and at the beginning of your upkeep you lose a life and you amass one so um and then whenever a zombie token you control with a power of six or greater so unfortunately it's zombie tokens which it does include your zombie army but uh does not include lord of treasure horn right uh, when a zombie token you control it with power six or greater attacks it gains lifelink to end turn so ideally if you know you can't find treasure horn you are holding this army back to either uh, block or uh, eventually if it's six or greater power you attack with it right. get the life back that you've been losing this whole time um, which will also help when Tressor Horn comes down because you have to pay two when he comes out right a mass is great especially then you've got I've got uh, Angrath which is two Rakdos Rakdos so Yep. Two red black, two black black, two red red, whatever mm -hmm. combination you want. Uh, he's got a stat. He comes in with five loyalty counters. Uh, he's got a static ability because he's from War of the Spark. Uh, it says creatures you control have menace, which is great for a ten four. Uh, it it is better than than you realize. Yeah. Or than a lot of people realize. Uh, as somebody who's played a deck with Tressor Horn, it is very hard to actually get through. Remember, Tressor Horn doesn't have any kind of evasion whatsoever. So giving him menace just means that opponent has to throw two creatures in front of it. Now, you're talking about a creature that regenerates, mm. the Lord of Tressor Horn. I mean, his, tough, his toughness is four, which is decent, but you're forcing opponents to throw two creatures in front of him so that they don't take, the, so they don't take damage. And a creature with a 10 power can probably kill off both of the creatures that are being put in front of it. Yeah. So at least I right. Mean, so so you are forcing them to churn through to churn through creatures. Now when you run against the token deck, hmm. it becomes a, it becomes a lot more difficult. Yeah. But um, either way, a mass does help here. This isn't just or sorry, menace really helps here. Right. Angrath isn't just here to drop a token to drop the, a zombie token into play. He does more than just that. Yeah. So. And he has a singular ability or uh, activated ability, mm -hmm. which is uh, for uh, minus two loyalty, a mass two, which isn't uh, <clears throat> terrible because it then does create a blocker. He protects himself. Mm -hmm. um, granted, you can never go back up, but uh, I only threw two in here because there's plenty of amass things. I've got more evasion. Um, as for other evasion uh team or battle rage uh sure it gives it's one in a red instant target creature gains double strike until end of turn Hello. but if you have a creature with power four or greater <coughs> trust <or horn. coughs> uh it gives it trample uh so right you, so team or battle rage all by itself yeah doubles the damage and provides and gives it trample right um okay so there's a reason team or battle rage is in the original is in my original version of Tressor Horn. Mm. Um, I was really going for that whole. Here comes Tressor Horn, one shot, you're dead. Yeah. Um, because you don't often get two chances. Yeah. With this guy, I mean, he. I think we've talked about it previously in an episode at some point because I, I remember so. talking about it where uh, I remember playing against this deck and uh, you had you had Teamer Battle Rage. Um, in hand and I thought that you might <laughs> so I blocked yeah. and then the next turn came around you attacked again knowing that I could still block but if you had team or battle rage I would be dead regardless because it would give it trample yada yada, yada. yeah 
Um, so like, I have three in here because I mean, Magical Christmas Land. Hey, there's more than one opponent, <laughs> yeah, and you want to up your chances of drawing the card. Yeah. yeah, and presumably at some point people are going to be low enough that even if they do block, giving something double strike and trample will be enough regardless of like how much they're blocking with. Right. Um, and I think for my like final piece of evasion is the one card that both of us chose. I think this is the only overlap other than lands uh, and it's wonder. Um, I don't really have any ways to uh, dump it other than I think Jisa and Geralt, uh, which is to mill. Um, but if I end up getting it out or if for whatever reason I have to discard to hand size, uh, if I get it out, I've got Disciple of Bolus, which I can then sack. Granted, uh, X will be two. So Disciple of Bolus is 2-1 for three and a black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, <clears throat> when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is that creature's power. So it's an easy way to get Wonder into the graveyard, or if... Or you just sack Wonder to Tressorhorn. Yeah. That's also a beaut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Lord of Tressorhorn also is oh, the yeah. sack outlet. Um, but also, Disciple Bolus, you, I mean, if you are just really in need of uh, drawing... Uh, maybe your mass creature has gotten big enough that it matters. If you need to churn through your deck to find Tressor Horn, uh, Disciple of Bolus, I mean, it is there for both the life, mm -hmm. ga life gain and the draw. And it's a body. Uh, so, um, you know, you sack your mass creature to Disciple of Bolus, say it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's yeah. not very big. You gain three life. Uh, you draw three cards. You draw into Dresser Horn. Now you can play Dresser Horn. You sack Disciple of Bolus instead of the a mass creature that you're going to sack uh, and another zombie or something. And uh, it's great because now you're actually, you've netted a life rather than losing two life uh, just to Dresser Horn. The other part that I want to play up mm -hmm. is the life gain. Um, it's easy as a commander player to not worry so much about the life gain. There's 40 life. There's lots of it. Tressor Horn costs you two. Who cares? Right. We're playing 60 card. This is a 20 life starting total. <laughs> so imagine in your head what you think about losing two life and now double it. Now say you're losing four life to cast your commander. That's what we're really looking at here when we're talking about 60 card. Mm. Just because yeah, the there's percentage only 20. Wise. Yeah, yeah. If you're casting him for the third time, well, you're down to... You're down to 14, and that's assuming no one else has touched you. You're yeah. already starting to get down into an area where you might want to start getting a little worried about where we're at. Yeah, so. and not even to mention, if you have one or even both of Dreadhorde invasions, you're losing life yes. at the beginning of each of your turns. You like, mm -hmm. I was starting to worry about how to gain life in this. Dreadhorde invasion has some life gain to it. Disciple of Bolus would be the bigger thing to get that life. Right. Um, My original version of the deck had no life gain. <laughs> and I can recall more than once with having Lord of Tressorhorn in hand and being at four life. Oof. And just being like, I cannot play this. I just can't. Uh, I mean, I was better off with, with having two creatures on the battlefield than just having just the Lord of Tressorhorn. Mm. Uh, you know, Obviously, I lost anyway, but it, it, is a, it is a very real situation. You need to keep it in mind. Um, Andy, I think we got one more card that we need to talk about. <laughs> um, and then my final card, uh, which is an instant for one black, uh, is Tainted Strike. Yes. Uh, it says target creature gets plus one, plus zero. Irrelevant and gains infect until end of turn. So you have Tressor Horn out. You attack with it uh, with... How much ever mana you want up? I mean, you can yeah. with one black is all you need mm -hmm. uh, to when you attack with him. And well, if he's not blocked, you play tainted strike, and your mm -hmm. opponent is just dead because they've taken eleven infect and right. Uh, oops. <laughs> now, if they choose to block, yeah, 
you can choose to either play the Tainted Strike mm-hmm. or not. And I would suggest that if they've got a creature that can consistently block the Lord, whether it, ha- it that creature itself has Regenerate, or there's something else about the creature that keeps it from, that keeps Stressorhorn from killing it. It's amazing what a Tainted Strike can do because now he's not doing damage. He's, he's adding that many minus one, minus one counters to the creature. And that tends yeah. to kill off almost anything. So if the creature's indestructible or anything along that lines. So Tainted Strike isn't just necessarily there to say, oops, I win. Right. It will do that. But it's also there to say, okay, let's, get with the, let's cut it out with this messing around stuff. I'm coming in next time and you're actually going to have to deal with this. Yeah. So. And it's great too because like, like you said, it, it deals with very hard to deal with creatures but it also uh if yeah. because it ha- because tressor horn himself has regenerate yeah. this deck you don't need a lot of mana up during any turn you could get screwed for a few yeah. turns and still be okay um my land base is the way it is i don't have any i don't have any uh of the duels that i have i don't have any black or blue duels because uh there's no yeah. point in the game where you like there's like a few cards that you would need one or the other but generally you'd need both okay um so that's why uh i put in like of the i put in a few of the dual face lands uh which are either red or black or blue or red uh but n- i didn't put in any of the black or blues um it really really relies on the the basics here um, because the last time I played your version of this deck, yeah. uh, and this was a big point yeah. that I tried to do with this deck is not have any double pips, uh, okay. either black, black, red, red, blue, blue. Right. Um, because with 60 card game, it's, it's harder to get there. Um, in commander, it's, you've got all these land tutors and stuff. And I, I really just didn't want to bog down my land base with that. Um, right. Yeah, and this this deck is so heavily just black, uh, and I didn't even realize until I was putting the lands in. I was like, I've got five blue pips on individual cards. I mean, there's there's plenty of other copies of those cards, uh, and then uh, I've got one red spell, which is Teamer Battle Rage. Uh, my Planeswalker is Hybrid Mana, uh, and Lord of Tressorhorn. Just yeah, I mean yeah, that that's he is why what he is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like it's 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 a good it's a good black deck <laughs> that's got some blue and even less red. Yeah. Uh, I almost didn't even put in the basic mountain, but I was like, man, I should. Yep. So uh, that's my deck. All right. Uh, I'm the the more I built into it, I was like, oh, I'm actually very excited for this deck. Um, and without lands, uh, even like without even the duels, the deck comes to like. 50 bucks it's great right and when you realize you're running four copies of tressor horn at 650 a piece <laughs> uh i mean that's 26 dollars right there right so it tells you just how inexpensive a lot of the rest of this oh, is. oh yeah. um yeah no I, I i like the build uh tainted strike was not something i have that i have done um part of the other the other piece that i like about tainted strike is no one is going to think twice about you keeping black a black mana up mm. Because that's Tressorhorn's regeneration cost. Right, exactly. So everyone is fully expects you to use that if you need to to regenerate them. Yeah. They're not expecting it to become a tainted strike. At least not the first, not until the first time you play it. Yeah. Which um, is why I have three. Cause, right. Uh, I mean, at some point they're going to be like, how many do you have in this deck? <clears throat> well, could be four. Could be four. Absolutely. Um, let's quickly take a, a, a quick break. A quick right. break. Uh, and we'll be right back after these brief messages. And now back to you. Hey, we're back. We are uh, back. Welcome back to Temple of the Fallspawn. Uh, today we're talking about Lord of Tressorhorn because it's 
Halloween time. And he's a zombie from the Great Plain of Dominaria. We just talked about my deck. Yeah. Bruce, uh, you've got a pretty cool deck. Uh, well, thank you. Um, so for those of you who have clicked the link to check out what, what my deck is, um, this deck it comes from, uh, the basis of this deck comes from uh, decks I've, or a, a 60 card deck I was running with Tressorhorn in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a number of issues with the deck that I've tried to address here. And as we go through it, I'll explain, it, it will probably add a little more sense to, to what the deck is doing and why it's, why these cards are in there. So um, <clears throat> I guess the, uh, the initial, uh, well, I mean, let's start with the ramp, um, just because it's easy. It's three Nightscape Familiar, one Obelisk of Grixis, one Chromatic Lantern. Um, I wanted a ramp package that was going to provide me with as much color as mm. possible, because as Andy said, this deck can be a bit of a hog. Now, I've also altered that a little. So right now, the only color that has double a double color requirement is black oh great um i also made an alteration to the land package so that other than uh what's it here other than the rogues passage that are in there just about i think just about every card in there can provide black mana so if you're playing a land it should be able to provide black like other than the rogues yeah. passage so uh so that was my attempt to other to, than basics of course other than the basics yes that's right um the panorama will go search you for... Can search for any of them. Uh, um, and I'm, that's why I made sure that I had at least one mountain in there. Uh, there's only four islands, but um, all of the duels that I've used also count as islands. Because oh, the nice. last thing I want is for Wonder to be in my graveyard without having an island in play. <laughs> uh, and that has happened to me in the past. So... Um, so there we are. Yeah. Um, I like your Nightscape Familiars. I... I remember when I had played the deck uh, the pre- previously, mm-hmm. uh, finding them very interesting because, like, they they work perfectly. They're zombies, and they say, you know, your your red spells and your blue spells cost one less. Um, I had originally put three of them in my deck too, uh, but then right. I realized I don't have any red or blue spells. <laughs> well, there we go. Now I do have a bunch, yeah. and almost all of them. Also have a gene- also have some sort of generic mana cost to it. So if I'm playing a red or a blue spell and Nightscape Familiar is out, it does cost one less. Um, so uh, the downside, of course, is that it's not the color that's less; it's mm. the generic. So that's still something that needs to be kept in mind. Um, there's another section here. Uh, it's currently tagged as instance. It's probably better tagged as removal. Mm. Um, this is not really here uh well let me explain there's heroes downfall so that's just straight up removal um i wanted to be able to get rid of planeswalkers because that was proven to be a problem in some games uh Croesus's charm is in here there's just the one copy of it um it's nice because if something's going to if you need to get lord of tressorhorn off the table you can do that. You can return target permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, it all, it's also a great way to remove an opponent's creature. Because mm-hmm. most of the time with Lord of Tressorhorn, you just need it gone for one turn. Because then you're going to swing in and hammer them. So you just, so even if it's only for a turn, that's good. Um, the other two pieces of removal, it's Negate and, Arc- and Arcane Denial. Um, I've only got one copy of each. Could probably be two copies of Arcane Denial. Um, I want some card draw in the deck. Arcane Denial gives me that. And if the opponent is getting two cards, well, odds are I'm using the Arcane Denial or the Negate to stop them from getting rid of Lord of Tressorhorn. Yeah. Um, whether that's through bounce or h- however. Yeah. There were people were finding ways to get to him. And man, I just don't want to have to pay <laughs> that enter the battlefield effect over and over. Oh yeah. So you yeah. really do want to protect him once he's down there, and that's sort of what that package was about. And honestly, like Arcane Denial um, has the nice moment of 
it's any spell. Um, with, right. With negate, I think it's just non-creatures. It's which, non-creature. I mean, if Most of the stuff that was targeting the Lord was non-creatures, so right. I wanted to try. I wanted to run with negate, but um, and I mean, it's kind of thematic. You're giving, you're giving somebody uh, two two draws again, but uh, this time, unfortunately, you can't choose. Who, yeah, it's just whoever played. <clears> that this may spell. be a, that's probably a downside of the deck is being a little too generous in the uh, card draw for your opponents. But yeah, um. The uh, well, and then I'll talk about the card draw package. Um, there's only four cards in here for card draw. Uh, the monastery siege at the beginning of my draw step, uh, you can essentially loot. Um, I like that. It, I mean, I don't mind seeing cards in the graveyard with this deck, it's just not that big a deal. Mm. Um, the dragon option is it spells your opponent's cast that target you or a permanent you control, cost two more to cast. Mm. I may do that when the Lord of Tressorhorn is already on the battlefield and I'm ready <laughs> and I've got my, I've got the other cards I need. Yeah. It's almost always going to be oh, a absolutely. hard draw. It's, but, it's always going to be you know, When you think you're poised and ready for a finishing blow in the next turn, maybe I'll go that route <laughs> just to try and stop... Yeah. Lunacy from happening. You know, I, I, I say it's always cons, but last time I played this, I think it got bounced to my hand for whatever reason, probably right. a Cyclonic Rift or something. And then uh, it was so late in the game that I was like, I just need to play it for dragons because I can't, I, I don't want, I want people to be discouraged from targeting me or my permanents. So, right. uh, it, yeah, it's flexible yeah. to an extent. So. Uh, um, the other one I've another card drive got it's Underworld Connections mm. um, for one a black and a black you enchant a land and the land has the ability to tap you pay a life and draw a card um, essentially it's Phyrexian Arena but you have to tap a land to do it I'm okay with that um, mostly because I'm not really going to be using it yeah uh, when I need the mana for Lord of Tressorhorn um, yeah and the other benefit is I can save it until the end of my opponent's turn. Yeah, it's great because it, yeah, you can do it whenever, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't always have to do it. Right. It's like with like plenty of people died to Phyrexian Arena because it's mandatory. Exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, I I like your card draw because like I mean Grixis Battle Mage, um, two two mm -hmm. for two two for three, blue and tap you loot. Is that? Yep. Uh, draw a card, discard a card. For red and tap, uh, target creature can't block this turn, which is great for evasion. Right, and that's why Grixis Battle Mage is in there. I mean, either one of them by themselves mm. is just fine, but the fact is, he does both. Uh, why wouldn't I put this? Uh, it just seems to make sense to throw it in there. So uh, Even, I mean, Grave Birthing is a cantrip, so you're just, like, it's yeah. two and a black. Uh, it is some sort of card draw, if only because... right. Uh, it does a thing and then you draw a card. Yes. So it's just replacing itself. But it's probably replacing itself with something better and you're getting something to sack out of it. Right, you're getting something to sack and the thing you're getting to sack, you can also sacrifice it for mana if need right. be. So honestly, the grave birthing really does a lot of work in on three different, on three different uh, piles as far as card draw, mana, and giving me a sack mm. when I need it. Um, so, uh, originally, this this I wanted it to be four, and in the original deck, it was down to two because that's all I had, right. which is just bizarre for you know what amounts to a twenty five cent common. But uh, it's just that's where it was. So um, I sort of left it there. Uh, for the Lord of Tressorhorn, there's a handful of creatures in the deck, but ideally, I want to. I'm creating token creatures that I'm planning to sack right. to the Lord of Tressorhorn. So. Uh, Grave Birthing obviously gives me tokens. Uh, another one, Weaponcraft Enthusiast. Uh, this is a, a three mana black creature. It's two and one black mana. Um, it has Fabricate 2, which means you can either put two plus one plus one counters on it, or you can create two colorless servo artifact creatures in addition to the what is currently a zero one. <laughs> um, it's almost comical that there's an option here because yeah, you're, you're getting three. I'm taking the three, three creatures bodies, every yeah. single time. I it, there. I'm sure that there's a situation when I won't, but 
I can't think of it right now. Yeah. So, and then of course rounding it out, you've got the the four black black six six grave titan, um, which I mean, even if you don't draw into Lord of Tresorn ever, I mean, which I mean, you have four, you're gonna do it. Uh, grave titan just plows over here. Well, and this was just it. Um, the, the original version mm-hmm. was a one trick pony. It was Lord of Tressorhorn or nothing happens. Um, and too many times nothing happened. So at least with this, I feel like Grave Titan is a threat that they have to act on. Um, not only is it giving me the zombie creatures that I could sack to Tressorhorn, but I mean, a 6-6 six, six death touch. Yeah. You got a deal. I yeah. just felt like he was another threat and the deck needed more than just the one threat. So... Um, um, I really like the spice of the uh, the other legendary creature in this deck. Chainer, Nightmare Adept. It's two black red. He's a 3-2 uh, human minion. He's got two lines of text. First one, discard a card, colon. You may cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn. Activate only once each turn. That's great. You can bring Tressorhorn back if somehow he makes it to the graveyard, whether through discarding mill or mm-hmm. just general death. Uh then, oh, I guess there's plenty of looting. So if you loot him away, you can get him right back. Right. And the great thing about that is that his second line of text says, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until your next turn. Right. So, I mean, okay. Obviously, ideally, we're looking at Tressorhorn. Tressorhorn's in the graveyard. You spend the four to get, you discard a card. Mm-hmm. Preferably, the card you're discarding is Wonder. <laughs> uh, discard that to your graveyard uh, and then spend the four to cast Lord of Tressorhorn. You still have to pay two life. You still have to sack two creatures and you still have to let an opponent draw two cards. However, you now have a 10-4 creature that has haste. And probably flying. And probably flying because you would think that if you're discarding a card and sacrificing two creatures, please, at least one of those three <laughs> hopefully is wonder. And if Wonder's not already in the graveyard. Um, right. And, you know, even without Wonder, um, tell me more about uh, your little evasion package you have here. It's interesting because when I first started with this, the attitude was make him big to hit hard. Yeah. Um, I had Team or Battle Rage in here. Yeah. I have pulled it out of this. Um, to expected. No, there was for two reasons. Uh, one, I decided I wanted to focus on getting Lord of Tressorhorn through. I wanted to either make him unblockable, give him some kind of evasion. Uh huh. Trample is a kind of evasion. The difficulty with Teamer Battle Rage is when you give him double strike, you're almost only ever doing it when he's not blocked because you want to hit for the full 20. Right. You're too worried about the value. No. Makes sense. Well, what happens is when the deck works the way it's supposed to, on turn four or turn five, you're swinging at somebody and taking them out of the game. (laughs) And then you look at the other two opponents who watch this happen, and they're both going, "Uh uh-oh. Now suddenly you're not going to be able to get either one of them out of the game, so you've eliminated one person early and left them sitting there for 20, 30 minutes while you're fighting to try and get rid of the other two. Mm. And the trick's out of the bag. They That's know right. that yeah. there's no way they can take 10 because they're never going to take 10. They're going to take more. So I thought, let's pull that back. Everybody knows he's a 10-4 creature. Great. I'm going to try and swing in. I'm going to try and make him, give him some kind of evasion so that he hits for mo- almost 10 all the time. Mm. So I'm going to start with Rogue's Passage just because it's a little bit different than the rest. Um, everybody pretty much knows what Rogue's Passage does. <laughs> yeah. Just remember... It's probably the least efficient way to get them Certainly through. the least efficient way because you're looking at four lands plus the Rogue's Passage that need to be tapped. Yeah. This is not ideal. So the Evasion Package, we've already mentioned Wonder. I've got two copies of Wonder. It should probably be more, but mm. there it is. Um, Thassa, God of the Sea. For one in a blue, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. This is the reason it's in this is the reason Lord of Tressorhorn is in there. I mean, Thassa, you're gonna be hard pressed to ever turn it into a creature. So um 
Um, the other option is I've got two copies of Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, Janet Creature, or sorry, Quip Creature gets Hexproof and Haste. Um, obviously we want Haste. I don't want to put him out there and then leave him sitting there for a full turn, not doing 10 damage, mm -hmm. or just sitting there because, man, that's a tempting target. Mm -hmm. So give him Hexproof, give him Haste, swing in, make it happen. Yeah, much better than the... Uh, the other boots, the uh, the greaves, the greaves, yeah. Because lightning greaves will make it uh, have shroud, and then you can't target it with uh, this creature can't be blocked. Right. Uh, I did talk to somebody, and they suggested haunted cloak. Oh yeah. Um, and I I may go with that. Just it gives it vigilance, trample, and haste. So you don't get the you don't get the the level of protection that you do, but uh, you can swing. And then you still have him back to block, and he does regenerate, so there is some of that. Mm. Trample and haste, I, I do like that option, but uh, as for, for now, it's not in here. Um, the real shift for the deck is I've also added four copies of Fling. Um, now, Fling is an instant, and it says as an additional cost to cast Fling, sack a creature. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to target creature or player. So, whenever Tressorhorn is about to die, I'm going to fling him. Mm -hmm. I get a bonus 10 points of damage to a creature or a player. Almost my intention would be player. Um, this can also work out so that even when Tressorhorn isn't about to die, Tressorhorn swings, does 10, point of, 10 points of damage, use the fling... Put him in the graveyard and do 10 more and finish the opponent. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish that I had built this deck already. <laughs> it, it's, it's so easy to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, your deck is is silly. I'm very interested to see how, how Fling works yeah. with this deck. Um, the difficulty is that you the, the downside of recasting the Lord of Tressorhorn is so bad um that you know flinging him and then playing it back out i mean you don't want to have to fling yeah. it for every single opponent you're you're gonna run out of cards you just, <laughs> you just can't do that it's not gonna work but um yeah i mean the whole point is to give it a shot and see what happens so yeah and i mean i think i think what you you said up uh, about getting this out turn four or five is a good point where people you're gonna take somebody out they're gonna be dead for far too long uh and that's not going to be fun for the table. And this, I think with, yeah, exactly. That's, I th that's the big part. I think with my my build, um, I worried that I didn't have enough protection for Dressorhorn himself, but I have enough recursion, and I have enough. Well, I mean, the idea of my deck is to put him out later, so that I mean, right. if need be, you put him out on turn seven. You've got the four Dressorhorn mana, right. and then you've got three black to regenerate him each turn. Hopefully that's enough. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, either way. Um, I, I think that these are some pretty pretty cool, pretty cool decks. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, more importantly, uh, if you got any suggestions, let me know. Um, this is... Uh, my version of the deck is likely a, a version that is going to come to reality. Um, the current one that I have, uh, I do feel like it's just not a whole lot of fun for the rest of the table. And I think that this other option could be better. So, um, but I'm always happy to hear from other people, hear what they have to say. So, yeah. Who doesn't like flinging and flying x <clears throat> Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, reach out to us on Twitter at FallSpotMTG. Thanks for sticking around for four seasons. Uh, yeah. We've got a fifth season coming up in three weeks. I'm going to take two weeks off for a nice little break um we will be back i believe on the 17th of november very cool very, excellent very fun um thanks so much for hanging out thanks so much for listening we're temple of false pod where our decks are not optimized but our plays sure as heck are fun and scary because it's halloween Ooh. Ooh. uh happy happy tressor horn uh have a great night and may your fifth land be the temple Bye.
Hey everyone, Andy here. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Temple of the False Pod. Just a few housekeeping things here at the end of the show. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, pretty much wherever you can find podcasts. Subscribe and give us a review. It really helps out the show. And it'll show us what you like about our podcast. Uh, also, we've got a Twitter and an Instagram. Our handle is falsepodmtg, all one word. So be sure to follow us. Feel free to reach out to us there or drop us an email at falsepodmtg at gmail.com and tell us your favorite magic-related story. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again to you and to Bruce. He's Mana Burned on Twitter, and I'm Andy Weekend on Twitter and Twitch. We're Temple of the False Pod, where our decks aren't optimized, but our plays sure as heck are fun. Have a great night, and may your fifth land be the temple.